Liquidity DAO bridge pool swap. Layer 2 plasma wormhole snark. These are the things that 90% of the blockchain space is talking about. Yet we are here to build real, grounded solutions that make an impact on your organization and the world as a whole. Behind me, you can see the factory of my great-grandfather, Simon van den Berg. He was the inventor of artificial butter. His company soon grew successful, and he was sued for using the word butter. So he had to rebrand it to margarine. Margarine became the bread and butter of society. And as his company grew larger and larger, he merged at some point with the organization of the Jurgens family. Fun fact is that our single largest investor in Mintblue today is also a descendant from the Jurgens family. But why am I telling you this? Unilever has about 400 brands under management, 120,000 employees and 60 billion in yearly revenue. At some point, they owned and controlled more than 80% of the European market. This is called a monopoly. And although history does not repeat itself, it does often rhyme. And just like back then, today on the internet, we have a small group of powerful data companies that control and own more than 80% of total web traffic on the public internet. So although I'm very proud of what my great-grandfather built, I disagree with his ethos, and it is now time for the pendulum to swing back from monopolists to peer-to-peer -to -peer trade, to fair competition and to collaboration. And that's what Web3 and Mintblue is all about. My name is Niels Vandenberg. I am the CEO of Mintblue. And our mission is to make the public blockchain as accessible as the public internet. And we do this through asking fundamental questions about this technology. Questions like, why does it take 15 years for mainstream adoption? Why are there 4,000 blockchains out there today in production? Why are 99% of these blockchains so-called account-based blockchains, while less than a percent are so-called UTXO-based blockchains? While it's been proven that the UTXO-based blockchain is far more suitable for enterprise use, for scale, for low compliance, for privacy and low cost, we think we know the answer. But we'll get back to that later. Because first, we wanted to prove the viability of a UTXO-based blockchain. And we did this through breaking the world record in transaction processing this quarter. We processed more than 50 million transactions in a single day. This is more than traditional payment infrastructure handles in a traditional day. We handled peak loads of 1,500 transactions per second. And note that people think this was merely a stress test. Empty transactions, doing nothing. Well, I'm happy to share that there's a very exciting use case that was proven the viability of that I'll share later today. But it will be later in the talk. This world transaction record has led us into mainstream media outlets like Business Insider, TechZine and TechEU. And these public out uh, outlets also got us into the blockchain labs and the innovation labs of very reputable companies like the Dutch tax office, commercial banks like Rabobank and ABN AMRO, and even Royal Dutch Shell. And these professionals are starting to listen to why they are still stuck in testnet with all their proof of concepts, why there's no real production yet. And this is the secret we're telling them. Account-based blockchains are expensive and slow, but they have a superior developer uh, experience because it offers a central virtual machine on the network that makes it really easy to build with. UTXO-based blockchains are far more suitable for enterprise needs, high-skill, low-cost, compliant, private, but it lacks one feature, a central virtual machine that makes it easy for developers to build with. And that's exactly what Mimblue does. We are that tiny block right there that connects to the gigantic public blockchain. And we offer state 
a virtual machine to developers building applications with our infrastructure. So they have all the upside of an Ethereum EVM-based blockchain, but not the downside of low transaction processing and, low and uh, high cost. So that being said, it's now time to go into the accessibility phase of the network. We had an amazing infrastructure phase in the maturity of the network, primarily led by Enchain. But now a time of accessibility is coming, where we need to enhance and give the entrepreneurs, the business owners and the innovators the tools to build the use cases that hit mainstream adoption. And we don't only facilitate, we can do it ourselves too. So today, I'm going to run you through the integrations we have going for the past couple of years, or past one and a half years since our inception. Um, and at the end of the use case and the solutions, I will dive into the solution highlights of the day of my talk. It's a very exciting uh, highlight I'm very happy to share with you guys. But first, the solutions of the past year. First up is e-invoicing. We have integrated our infrastructure in the bookkeeping system of Visma Yuki. Now, invoices are authenticated. This combats fraud, but it also enables automation, so accountants save hundreds of hours every year. Next up, immutable storage. Storkov, also in the invoicing space, is using our infrastructure to store invoices directly on the blockchain to enable multi-party encryption techniques. So in one invoice, they can give access to the tax office, the auditor and the bookkeeper. This is called continuous transaction control, and it becomes mandatory in the EU the coming years. We're also working with identity authentication. We have an integration live with the Dutch Chamber of Commerce in the Netherlands to connect the commercial register of the Chamber of Commerce to public keys of the public blockchain, because then we can prove authenticity of data on the blockchain. But this integration was only a national solution, and we want to scale internationally. So I'm very excited to share that we also got adopted in the early adopter wave of the European blockchain service infrastructure. Heck, I would never think we would support multiple blockchains, but today we do. Enterprise Bitcoin and the European blockchain, because it's required to port identity and self-sovereign and identity frameworks over to the public blockchain. Next, we're also working in digital payments. Intersolve is an electronic money institute, one of the oldest, in fact, in the Netherlands, and we're integrating e-money tokens onto the public blockchain. <coughs> now we can program the money and we can do micropayments. Intersolve also has more than 100,000 merchants already connected with proof-of-point-of-sale uh, proof uh, systems. So it gives us a really easy and nice go-to-market um, as well. And lastly, we're working with transparency and impact. We have recently uh, published a public protocol that allows you to do nature restoration via the blockchain. So anyone in the audience or people at home watching the live stream, they can take um, the protocol, it's on our, on our website, the documentation, and you can create a transaction on the blockchain saying, uh, plant five trees, this is the price. You publish it on chain, and something listens on the blockchain for orders coming in, listens, grabs them, and then executes them. So now everyone is able to add nature restoration into their own platforms and services. All right. That being said, that was a rundown of the past year. And now I'm very excited to go into the solution highlight of the talk. Smart wearables. Let's have a look at our new partnership with NowWatch. Can I ask you something? How do you feel right now? Are you happy? Healthy? Are you distracted by daily life? Are you stressed? Or are you worried about everything the future might bring? Are you lost? Or are you in the only moment that really exists? Now. Now Watch builds a bridge between the world outside and inside. It makes you aware of your sleep, your stress, health. It restores your balance. 
and tells you everything about your inner world. Now Watch doesn't tell you time. It gives you time. And helps you get more from each moment in life. The time is now. Now Watch. So NowWatch is a smart wearable brand that doesn't tell you time, it gives you time. And they are truly putting their users front and center. They are the world's first smart wearable brand that makes absolute data ownership possible for its users. So we built a proposition together with them. Time is now to take control of your data. And what this does is, you are the owner of your own biometric information encrypted in an on-chain wallet that can be authenticated and accessed with your own device that is fingerprinted with your biometric information. I'm having one right now. And what these, this does is, when you are the owner of your biometric information, a personal data market emerges. Nowwatch is an established brand and company with an existing ecosystem of research labs, universities, hospitals, and even prominent healthcare technology provider Philips Healthcare. And together, we're building a marketplace where every heartbeat, every step, every breath, every sleep cycle is powered by absolute data ownership. So this is what the marketplace looks like. We have a central distributed database, the public blockchain, and NowWatch is connected with its watches to this public blockchain. This allows people that wear the watch to give access and revoke access to their personal biometric information to third parties directly. So then we have third parties like Philips Healthcare, research labs, and even fitness gyms that can be connected and integrated with the public blockchain and in a peer-to-peer -peer manner exchange biometric information in exchange for services. So we have full transparency of the sharing of the data and there's even the possibility for direct compensation of this biometric information in the form of micropayments, a payment scheme that we've been trying to get off the floor for 30 years now on the internet, but now possible. So let's have a closer look at the application. We have integrated a personal vault into the Nowatch application. So users that register for an account get onboarded into the creation of their own on-chain wallet. A private key is generated and split among multiple recovery methods. So one piece of the key will be the watch, one key piece of the key will be your phone, your email, a KYC provider, maybe even your Google account. And together, these pieces unite in one private key that accesses your on-chain vault with your biometric information. And we do this so not a single company can ever have access to your data. You distribute the private access key. Then we also added data sharing capabilities into the NowWatch platform. So imagine you go to the gym and your gym teacher asks for access to give a better plan to help you train better, to see the effect of the, of the training. Imagine you go to a doctor and you get a new sleeping drug prescribed and the doctor requests for access for your sleep cycle to see the effects of the new sleeping drug. Or imagine you're a large-scale research organization and you want to see there's a football match in the country and you want to see how hundreds of thousands of people are watching a match and you want to see how the heartbeats go over these, over these macro-analysis people. This is all now possible with a personal biometric data marketplace that has never been able to build before Web3, before the blockchain. And this is really what we do. We are an access point provider to the public blockchain, just you now, like you have now internet service providers to the public internet. But we bring data ownership and data control to your platform and your users. So head over to console.minblue.com. Try to upload a file, a JPEG, a PDF, an image, anything is possible. With a couple of clicks, you can just do it now. And now is the time for the pendulum to swing back from monopolists to peer-to-peer -to -peer trade, to fair competition and collaboration. And you're taking the lead. Thank you. <laughs>